Hello, I'm Matt from Production Audio Video Technology, and in this video we'd like to talk to you a little bit about room acoustics and how that can impact on your audio conference performance. So these days we rely fairly heavily on audio digital signal processors, or DSPs, to make audio conferences work. And certainly DSPs are very powerful, but they can't fix poor room acoustics and they can't overcome poor system designs. So before we rush out and buy the latest equipment, it pays to first consider the room into which that equipment's going to be installed. And the room properties that we're going to talk about today are noise level and reverberation time. Noise level should be fairly self-explanatory. We'll all be familiar with typical office conference noises, such as air conditioning noise, uh, office noise, and row traffic noise, and that sort of thing. For conferencing, we want to make sure that the noise level inside our conference room is low enough so that conversational speech isn't degraded. But how low is low enough? Well, it works out that somewhere in the range of 35 to 45 dBA is an appropriate range for conference room noise level. So to assess this, you'll need some kind of sound level meter. Fortunately, uh, most tablets and smartphones these days will come with apps, typically for free, that will do sound level meter for you. Um, these kind of apps uh, on your devices are going to be accurate to within a couple of decibels, which is perfectly fine for this type of assessment. As an example, this room has a noise level of about 45 dBA with the air conditioning on and about 39 dBA with the air conditioning off. So, the difference between air conditioning off and on is not so noticeable when using a close microphone such as this gooseneck, but if we switch to our ceiling microphones, the difference will be much more clear. Reverberation time, or perhaps more accurately, decay time in small rooms, is a measure of how long all the multiple reflections of sound take to die away to inaudibility. Spaces with long reverberation times are often described as echoey or live or similar. At the extreme end of long reverberation times are spaces like cavernous stone churches, road tunnels, or even some school gymnasiums, where reflected sounds persist for long enough that they overlap each other, making speech difficult to understand clearly. By contrast, for conferencing spaces, we want spaces with short reverberation times, so reflected sounds in these spaces de decay quickly. To control reverberation, we need to install acoustically absorptive materials inside the room. The more acoustic absorption, the shorter the decay. In our boardroom, we've installed heavy wool curtains on three internal walls for this very purpose. If we use exactly the same microphone in the same position, but we remove these curtains, you'll notice a marked difference in my audio quality. Then, if we move on to the ceiling microphones, the difference in quality will be even more clear. What was previously acceptable is now well below par. Reverberation time is not as simple to assess as noise level, however. More sophisticated measurement tools are required. For example, with Rational Acoustics Smart Analyzer software, we can measure balloon pops and calculate the reverberation time from measurements. There are also some handheld analyzers and even some smartphone apps that'll do it, um, but typically you won't find a smartphone app that'll do reverberation time for free. But even if you don't have access to these measurement tools, you can still use your ears and your eyes to assess a room. How does speech sound in your room? Can you hear an obvious reverberant tail on voices? Or is it fairly dry or dead sounding? You can also get a fair idea of how the acoustic of your room will behave by just looking at the room surfaces. If the majority of your room surfaces are hard, reflective surfaces, such as concrete, tiles, glass or timber, then there's a good chance your room is going to need some acoustic treatment. By paying attention to the acoustics of the room, and perhaps taking some simple measurements, you can make informed judgments about your audio conferencing approach. For example, if your room has a high noise level and a long reverberation time, ceiling microphones are probably not the best choice. You need a microphone that can be placed close to a talker, such as a gooseneck. If, however, you have a well-controlled room with low noise and short reverberation time, you can locate microphones further away from talkers, so ceiling mics may be appropriate. Of course, room acoustics aren't the only consideration in a well-informed conference room design. Electroacoustics, that is, the interaction between loudspeakers and microphones, is also crucial. So, check out our next video for tips on loudspeaker and microphone selection and placement, or contact us via our website at pavt.com.au.